House Speaker Mike Madigan says he believes Governor-elect J.B. Pritzker will now move ahead with his campaign promise to legalize recreational marijuana. As of August, cannabis is now a legitimate alternative to opioids in our state. And right now, just over 46,000 people have a medical marijuana card, a fraction of the state's population. But we found the law that allows for medicinal marijuana may not protect you once the drug tests come in. This is Light Up, Let Go. Because it broke their zero tolerance policy. She wants to be known as Shelly, a single mother who at 38 got tired of pain and pain pills. With a traumatic brain injury, bone disease, and a colostomy bag, in April, she took her doctor's written certification, spent $250, and got the state's red-framed cannabis card, good for three years. Now she's out of work and says she's being denied unemployment compensation. It's not right. And I'm not going to go back to pills to keep a job. Paperwork shows her manufacturing job in McDonough County let her go after 12 years and three promotions this summer. A co-worker thought she was taking drugs on the job. And I mean, I'm a worker. I work my butt off. You know, I can sit at home and collect disability, but you can't. You don't teach kids anything doing that. I'm made to feel like a criminal almost. It's, it sucks. Who else uses it, the medicine? 20,584 people applied last year for an Illinois patient card, 392 from Peoria. The top groups applying, age 51 to 60 at 22%, then age 61 to 70, making up 20% of applicants. These are really nice, and this is what I've always used, actually, is the... Medical cannabis from the dispensary, smoking two to three times a day, maybe 10 hits on the vape pen helps Molly Keener cope with fibromyalgia. It's worth it to be able to live a life instead of just existing. But fear of a positive drug test is the reason she hasn't applied for a job in four years. If I want to use my medicine and feel better, have a better quality of life, I know those things are off the table, unfortunately, in a lot of areas. At the same dispensary, Trinity Compassionate Care Center, another patient, a mother of three, has three and a half grams of flour or bud used to roll cigarettes or even cook with in edible products. She paid 35 bucks. This should last her three to four days. Her communications employer knows she uses it for PTSD. But just down the hall, the working nurse here claims she was fired from her last job in March of last year as she fought cancer for a third time with marijuana. It was a sad situation because I'd worked for them for seven years. Seven years, you're going to let me go? I've been nothing but, you know, good to all your patients. I could have medicated three weeks ago, and it's still going to show up. So in that sense, it's not fair. We've got to work out a testing system. And this is the test, a basic urine screen. It will search for the presence of THC, the psychoactive ingredient in marijuana. It'll turn up positive even if it's been in your system for weeks. Problem is, your employer won't know if you were actually impaired or affected at the time you took this test. On the other end now, the employer. OSF Healthcare certainly wants a safe workplace. More than 20,000 people are working for this major organization in Illinois, with 12 hospitals and more than 100 work sites like this one. They hire 3,000 people a year with a very clear rule about marijuana. If you test positive at all, that we are not, we are not able to hire you at this time. The vice president of human resources says they can spot test anyone when their behavior at work is suspicious, demonstrating a significant change. If you refuse, it's considered a positive test. You're suspended. For us, it's about caring for others' lives. And when we can't prove whether or not somebody is impaired or not, then, then we're going we're gonna to go towards the area of saying we're going to be conservative here and saying we're just not going to allow this at this time. But it's affecting more people every year. With only 55 medical marijuana dispensaries statewide, they've rung up more than $221 million in sales since it all began three years ago. It's one of those topics that people get giggly about, um, but it's real. Jeff Griffin is president of the Peoria Area Chamber of Commerce. Employers want healthy, happy employees. He just attended a National Chamber conference in Washington, D.C., where marijuana use was a discussion topic. He says so far, local businesses are not coming to him for advice on the pot issue. We haven't had a big uproar, so my, I'm thinking the, the, the marketplace is working it out. 
I don't want to dismiss it as a topic, but people just need to understand the rules don't change for a safe uh, work environment. Vague as it is for employees and businesses, it's also unclear in state law. The Compassionate Use of Medical Cannabis Pilot Program Act reads, it does not permit any person being under the influence of cannabis to create negligence, professional malpractice, or professional misconduct. But it also does not prevent a private business from restricting or prohibiting the use of cannabis on its property. But in often cited Section 40, it also reads, no school, employer, or landlord may refuse to enroll or lease to or otherwise penalize a person unless failing to do so would put the school, employer, or landlord in violation of federal law or cause it to lose a monetary or licensing-related benefit under federal law. We're still waiting on good cases in Illinois to rely on. Former state prosecutor Jeff Hall says the calls from confused and often newly unemployed cardholders are on the rise this fall. But getting employers to see the difference between the presence of marijuana and actual impairment is hazy. It's very difficult in this day and age to get a science-based law where everyone agrees. And that's frustrating. His advice to patients now? Do I tell my employer that I uh, have a medical cannabis card? And right now we say absolutely not. There is a law that protects you. But do you have the time and energy to fight that? In Delavan now, it's a hands-on business. Big business. Producing edible products that look like Tootsie Rolls. They doubled their staff here in one year, hiring educated, highly motivated people. Uh, chemistry degrees, I mean, we have a $1.5 million lab here. They add no food coloring, removing the ethanol from the product. This is one of only 21 cultivation centers or grow houses in the state. They believe recreational cannabis could be established in Illinois this summer. Regardless of whoever is going to be governor, we are going to be expanding and growing no matter what. Yes, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Yes, it is a growth industry. This is one of five grow rooms at this Delavan facility. They have 478 plants in this room alone. And in less than two weeks, they plan to double capacity. They will use this massive composter to take the marijuana waste to make their own soil, which they can use on the 70 acres they just bought to keep growing. Patients have been, have been very happy with the products that they have, getting away from some of the pharmaceuticals that they're having issues with. Uh, it, it's here to stay. Potentially expanding the number of work sites that could face the marijuana dilemma. Light up, let go. So what is it worth to Illinois? We looked at Colorado for guidance, where legal recreational marijuana sales started New Year's Day 2014. They saw a billion dollars worth of marijuana products sold last year and brought in $200 million in sales tax revenue. But Colorado has 5.6 million people. Illinois, 12.8 million. If you assume similar sales and a similar 15% tax rate, it's not hard to imagine a potential tax benefit of $360 million a year if Illinois chooses to legalize recreational cannabis.